Hi, and I'm gonna. I thought I would do a little short um, solid work demo and just kind of talk a little bit about design process also. Um, when we do demos at the museum, we're, we're doing demos for the public and not it's not so much about how to do something, but it's, a, it's sort of a little bit of how it's done that we're explaining and a little bit of history of class and a little bit of educational stuff, not too much of any of that, and then a little bit of entertainment as well. And so those kind of demos are pretty different from the kind that I would do if I was teaching. And so what I'll do here is a little bit of a hybrid of those two types of demos. So, so if, I'm if I'm teaching, if I'm trying to show somebody how to do something, I want to talk to them more about technique and um, uh, sort of step-by-step -step understanding what the glass is going to do. And I think I think your audience probably already knows pretty much of that. Um, but one of the things that's kind of precious to me about um, making things is not just the technique, not just how to make it, well, what are you going to make? Why are you going to make it? How are you going to think about what you're making? And so I'm going to make a little bear. It's going to look something like that. And um, you can you can kind of you can kind of think about what a bear looks like. And if you know how to shape glass a little bit, you can put some parts together and you can make something that looks kind of like a bear. But if you want to make a bear that has a really good sort of energetic bear feeling to it, you want to go a little deeper into that. And so, so what I do to start if I'm working on a design for an animal is I start by looking at photographs or if there are some live animals to it that I'll look at that. But I'll start by looking at the animal, look at lots of different versions of it, different photographs. And these days, because of the internet, we have so much access to so much imagery that that's an easy thing to do. So a little bit of visual research of photographs, and then drawing. I, I, for me, drawing is a really big part of the design process. And not making, not making beautiful showcase drawings, but making marks, making marks on paper that help you think about what do I know that the glass is going to do, and what do I do with the glass that's going to to make it look like the animal that I'm looking at. So I start up, so I'm going to make this polar bear, and so before I would start on a design for a polar bear, I would look at photographs, and I've got a few of them there. And then some little sort of scribbly cartoon drawings to think about what makes that bear look specific? What is it, what makes it look not like a teddy bear, and not like a brown bear, and not like a pony? And so, what I see about the photograph there is that the, the polar bears have these really big um, curves in their back. They've got really, their back legs and their hips are very high in, in relation to their shoulders and their neck and their head. They have really long necks and their neck and their head kind of tapers together. Their legs are really bulky, and that's partly because of the fur, but the glass, the bulk has to be represented with the whole mass of glass, and, and I'm not going to be doing anything that looks like fur here. So I'm looking at all those things, those curves and angles and proportions and the thickness of the legs, and the fact that the bears, when they walk, you can, you can see it just from these four photographs, when they walk, they kind of roll their, their hips and their, they have to lift up their paws and sort of fold it at a particular angle to take steps in the snow. And all of that is subtle and, and specific to the polar bear. So the more I look at that, those photographs, the more I can sort of include some of that subtlety in my, um, in my sculpture. And then there's the, the question of, since it's going to be a really small sculpture, it's only a few inches long, how do I, what do I pick out of all that stuff that I can see in the photograph of the polar bear to include in the glass um, without sort of overwhelming the, the sculpture with too much detail? So when I'm, when I'm doing a demo at the museum, 
I use this part of the process to do something like that, to tell a story about what it is I'm going to show people, because watching somebody gather is slow. And museum visitors don't really have a lot of interest in just watching somebody gather grass. And so that's a really good time to kind of um, set the stage, show things if you've got samples of what you're going to make, and then uh, sort of explain what you're going to do so that when you actually start doing things that are more active with the glass, you've got your audience prepared. <laughs> of the uh, polar bear. And like I said, I want to think about this, that round and back area being higher than the shoulders. And so I'm looking at that and thinking about, okay, where are the legs going to go? The shoulder is actually going to be in this area here where, where I haven't actually gotten any glass yet. So that'll be a second, a sort of secondary gap. and stretch it for the leg, I know that I want to make a really sort of fat connection. I want to push that glass into the body. And when I stretch it out, I want to stretch it real slowly so that the leg doesn't get too skinny. And then I know also, just from having done it a bunch of times, that after I've stretched it out, I'm going to shrink it back a little bit to make it flip. So I'm heating up more glass than I'm going to need because I know as I stretch that to get the tape and shape that I want, I'm going to be removing some glass. And so I want to anticipate that.
Okay, so now I'm thinking about the front legs. The back legs are roughly in place. And I'm thinking about where the front legs are going to go. And I want to think about that shoulder connection. The fact that I want the front legs to um, be in line with the back legs. The bear is going to be able to balance. The fact that when I get ready to melt that camera off the front, I'm going to have to get that area of glass really hot and gather some more for the neck, so I want to be careful not to uh, put the legs in a spot where they're going to um, get melted. Okay, and I'm just thinking about, at this point, getting the legs roughly in place, getting the connections nice and um, hot. And knowing that after they cool off a little bit, I can go back in there and take some glass away, and I can move the glass around a little bit. I'd rather have a little extra glass on each leg so that I can remove some as I'm shaking it, as opposed to having to add more. It's, it makes a more graceful shape usually to, to keep the glass and pull some off of it and then try to add it. rods to do almost all of the shape. At the point where I'll use some tweezers in here, but mostly I'm not going to be using tools on this particular design. There's a little crease right there. That's what I'm doing right now. It's going in there and uh, making sure that that's a really good hot seal and that the crease is smooth out. if I need to at this point if there's some weird curves happening. Or the other thing is if there's a curve and there actually is a curve between the, the uh, handle and the body, is that a curve I can make use of in giving the animal a little bit of a turn to its body? Because that sometimes will give it a little bit more of a lively um, uh, character. Uh, I wouldn't get 
to really find the right spot in the plane to get the heat into the glass as efficiently as possible. And that's something that for me has really developed a lot over the last few years of doing museum demos too, because I'm, I'm aware of the fact that people that are watching me um, can get bored easily. And so I want to get the I want to get the slow parts done as efficiently as possible. So I want to really find the hottest spot in the plane. And I want to take advantage of the fact, the fact that the heat is traveling away from me. And so whatever part of the glass I'm heating, I'm going to be very carefully pointing that into the plane to really get the heat in there as quick as I can. And then also for something like flat with the feet like this, I want the, the foot to be very soft, but I don't want the glass of the leg to be soft or I'll just end up squishing it when I try to flat the foot. So next thing I'm going to do is melt that handle off the foot. I'm going to punch into the belly. <coughs> I like hunting to a curved surface if I can, because then once I go back to um, fire polish it after I break it off, the shape, the, the, that curved surface and the viscosity of the glass are going to allow it to pull itself into a smooth surface again. I think a lot of people, uh, I've seen a lot of people punt it to a foot or to a tail or to a point of some kind, which is another option, but. Um, it means you got to reshape it when you take that handle off. And so this isn't going to require too much reshaping. So, so I'm thinking then again about the muscles and the shoulders of the bear and the neck. And I'm going to need to gather up quite a lot of glass to uh, give me enough volume to stretch that out as I'm getting ready to remove this handle. So I'm really jamming the heat into there. And kind of pushing it, pushing the handle back to gather that glass up. And then getting the heat back into the the area above the front legs, which would be the shoulder area, really, to make a nice, smooth curve there. Makers, we, we all get pretty fascinated and in love with the technical aspects of glass, which is great and fun, and, and that's why we love it. But um, I also uh, like to work with a lot of other materials, and so these kind of things that I'm talking about in terms of thinking about the shape and how you're going to um, sort of evoke the, the character of the bear would be the exact same thought process I'd be doing with other materials. And um, so it's, it's sort of a matter of putting, putting that thought process together with what you understand about how the glass moves that makes it really um, kind of exciting and I think that's the most interesting results. Okay, so I, be, I need to be thinking about what position this neck is going to be in now as I'm stretching it out. And then we're going to let them kind of sort of downward curve. And there was that little curve to the body that I started out with, which is, let's see, which I think I'll sort of enhance by turning the neck in that same direction. So 
really bears have big heads, but when you look at the head in proportion to the neck, the taper is really smooth and it ends up being a kind of kind of small, smaller than you might expect. I think I think with uh, in a glass handle sculpting, you have a tendency to make their heads bigger than they actually are, which is one design choice, but I think that's sort of the key is that you always want to be thinking about, is it a choice, or am I just doing it by accident because I'm not realizing that I'm doing it. So I'm going to go back in and keep it neck, the back end, the back end of the neck a little bit where it's attached to the shoulders, and let that curve, and then we have some grass for the But I didn't want to add eyes because it seemed so cartoony and I was a little haughty about it because I thought I was more inspired by things like uh, uh, like Eskimo sculptures that you don't need a lot of detail in. But enough times that I made an animal with no eyes or with just little indentations for the eyes, I had some kid that would come up to me and say, where are these eyes? And they seem so sad about it. But since then, I've got to have having pretty eyes on it. So we're going to add a little bit of black glass for the eyes. And the nose. Those are great, thank you. Thanks. Any 
got a friend. <laughs> yeah, he's got a friend now. He's got a homie.